Okay, Jim, this week we're doing a special edition. Dun dun. Uh oh. That's my special edition noise. <laughs> we're doing an update to uh, PFAS. Ah. Uh-huh. Our longest running and most listened to series of all time is mm-hmm. getting an addendum, an appendix, an additional update. And this is part what now? What number I think is PFAS? Five, maybe six. Ah, dude, PFAS five. Fast Five. It's like, I'm pretty sure the Fast and the Furious movies, when it got to the fifth one, they called it Fast Five. Fast Five. So it's fast like Five. The P Fast Five. P Fast Five. Okay, so. The, the Fast and We Are Furious. <laughs> that is true. So we're going to talk about the FDA has announced that there will be PFAS no longer used in um, grease proofing or waterproofing paper that comes into contact mm. with food. And that sounds like good news, but then if you dig a little deeper, there are definitely some questions that we're going to talk about today. So let's get into it. Okay. Okay. Fast five. (laughs) And we're furious. (laughs) Hey, I'm Melissa. I'm Jam. And I'm a chemist. And I'm not. And welcome. To chemistry for your life. The podcast helps you understand the chemistry of your everyday life at night. And your food wrapper. The chemistry of your food wrapper. <laughs> <laughs> so if you haven't seen uh, some of our more recent episodes, we record at night now. And we won't make this like, what would you call it? Uh, prelude. Uh, an, uh, an every di- Every time intro. Yeah, but just it's helpful <laughs> for a few times maybe. If you notice a more tiredness, a a sluggishness, a as we get used to it, we may seem a little different. Yanni. <laughs> mm-hmm. But we will get used to it, and so will you guys. But we uh it's helpful to know that <laughs> that's what's changed. I just yawned like it was on cue. <laughs> yeah. We <laughs> we are, however, not we are not less excited about no. talking about chemistry. We're talking about it at a different time of day, so you can understand, hopefully. Yeah that it changes things a little bit. It does change things a little bit. Okay, so for also for today, before we dig into it, do you want to do a, cu- a quick overview? We haven't done this in a while of like who we are and what we're about. I would love to. Why don't we start with me telling people about who you are? Okay, let's do that. So Melissa, just moments ago, she said she's a chemist and she was telling you the truth. In fact, she's <laughs> a three-time chemist. Three-time sort of. award. <laughs> got her bachelor's, got her master's, got her PhD in chemistry. It's and true. Uh, so when she talks about chemistry, she's here, she does a lot of research on each topic, teaches it to me. I'm not a chemist. I'm learning for the first time along with you. And then I'm trying to learn it and retain it and (laughs) say it back to Melissa. And that's what we're doing here. That's doctor chemist to you. I'm just kidding. Okay. Um, (laughs) That's doctor chemistry for your life to you. (laughs) So that's doctor (laughs) chemistry. (laughs) So yes, that's me. I'm a chemist and Jam is not a chemist and that makes this really fun. But the other thing that Jam has going for him besides not being a chemist is he is really good at sound. And so he is the reason for the crystal clear noise brought to your ears Mm. today. So thanks for that, Jam. That's that's what I studied and it happened to all work out that... I knew how to do that and Melissa wanted to start a podcast. And so we were like... And you wanted to learn science. Mm Mm-hmm. Oh. So that's what we that's who we are. And our goal is to make chemistry, just like we said, accessible and more easy to understand and interesting to everyone. So you're welcome here, whether you're a chemist or not a chemist mm-hmm. or uh, just somebody trying to exercise and learn something while they're hanging out. And we have folks of all all across that spectrum that listen. Mm-hmm. So like there are people who are chemists, people who are teaching chemistry mm-hmm. that listen. They all, they're also people who assign it, who teach chemistry and they assign it to their students. Yep. Listen to it. Uh, and there are people that are like me that just are interested in science. They don't work in it. They are not c- currently like a, stu- a student anywhere. They just are interested in chemistry. And so all people welcome. Everyone's welcome. Mm-hmm. I hope we have people who thought that they wouldn't like chemistry and then they listen and they do, which is what happened to me with 99% Invisible. Mm-hmm. I was like, design, boring. And then I started mm-hmm. listening. And if you thought you didn't like chemistry and then you listen to our podcast and you were like, actually, I guess I kind of like it. You played right into Melissa's hands because that's been her theory all along. That's my hope and my dream. Okay. Mm-hmm. So now 
Let's get into it. Okay. Oh, wait, one more thing. Sorry, there's lots of housekeeping kind of at the front of this. This episode is dedicated to our new Patreon supporter, John T. Uh-huh. Hey, John, welcome. Thank you so much for joining our super cool community of patrons. Mm-hmm. We're so glad to have you. Yes, and patrons like John T uh, in our chem community, they help keep the show going. They cover the cost of making it. And we're a small little independent podcast. And so those folks who help support the show, um, they make it free for everybody else. And so we're grateful for you, John, and our whole community. This episode is dedicated to you. Yeah, so thank you. All right, now let's, uh, in honor of John, let's talk about something depressing. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually pretty exciting. And um, our listener, Brian M., sent me an article. So thanks, Brian, for this talking about PFAS. So um, he sent me an article which was an update from the FDA that PFAS are no longer going to be used in grease proofing paper. Mm. But like I said, I dug a little deeper and it made me ask some questions. So I'm going to talk about why the FDA decided this and then also um, what I think and what questions that this makes me ask right away. Okay. And maybe what questions you have too. Okay. So yay, this is exciting. If you haven't listened to our four part already, or at least four part uh, series on PFAS, that's a quick overview is that's perfluorinated or polyfluorinated um, alkylated substances or alkyl substances. So all that means is normally we have hydrocarbons. You've probably heard that before, which are molecules made up mostly of carbon with hydrogens bonded to them. Um, However, Sometimes chemists figured out that if you replace the hydrogens with fluorines, you can make other convenient things that are very unlikely to let other things stick to them. So think Teflon pans is just a carbon chain with a bunch of fluorines around it. And those are used in all kinds of things, including paper. So like, or like raincoats, using them in, um, uh, Period products like mm-hmm. menstrual underwear, they're used in. Um, we talked about like microwave like, popcorn bags mm-hmm. and like pool plumber plumbers use it for like certain like it's like a kind of liquid gel version yeah. that they can put when when they're joining things together or whatever. It's like everywhere. Yeah, and so um, that's kind of a brief overview of them. But what we found more recently is they're actually probably not super safe, and so now we have a lot of contamination in our water and possibly in the food that we're eating. And that's not great. Mm -hmm. So we talked about how um, a good way that we can make a change because it's nearly impossible to really avoid them just with lifestyle change. Mm -hmm. And we're disproportionately able to do that the more resources that we have. So that really negatively impacts people with less resources more, which sucks. Mm Mm-hmm. And so we want to do what we can to make change. And the best way to do that is to hopefully vote and put people in office that can make changes. And so something that's worked well and that's gone right is the FDA is starting to hold people accountable for Mm. some of this. Mm -hmm. So in the early 2020s, some evidence came out that one type of PFAS in particular is going to be a more potential harm to people. Mm. So let's talk about what that is and why. There are four categories where food might interact with PFAS. Okay. One is nonstick coating on pots and pans, which we've talked about before. We've tried to eliminate that as much as possible from our homes. Mm -hmm. And then two is on gaskets and um, things that sort of like are used in the manufacturer. So the, there'll be incidental contact. Mm. So um, I don't know where I just totally lost my place. <laughs> um, then there's PFAS that are used to help manufacture other PFAS. Mm. And then the very last category is the to grease proof or waterproof food wrappers. Got it. And that's the one that seemed like there was some evidence that it was more of a threat. Mm. So let's talk about why that one seems like it has more of a threat than some others. Yeah. In our other PFAS applications, we've talked about how they are polymers. What are polymers, Jam? They are a large molecule 
made up of molecules, Mm -hmm. a chain of repeating things that make a really strong, most of the time, very strong coating or substance or whatever, and they're everywhere. And we've talked about them. It seems like almost like every episode, half of our episodes or something have (laughs) polymers included in them. Yeah. So typically the PFAS is the repeating unit. My favorite analogy is like if you have a pearl necklace, you have a pearl that repeats over and over and the pearls as a collective that are stuck together in a long string make a pearl necklace, Mm. right? Mm -hmm. So typically the PFAS are the pearls. Mm -hmm. So they would be making up the pearl necklace. Okay. Now, because of that, they're relatively hard to break off. Right. Um, you'll break up the polymer maybe, like if you chip off a Teflon coating, but you're not going to get individual small molecules of PFAS. And also when they're applied in coating, they're done so in really high temperatures. So that means that if there are any small molecules of PFAS left over, those will usually be eliminated. Okay. Okay, but the PFAS that's used on paper to grease proof it Mm -hmm. is a little different. The repeating units is not a pearl. Let's say it's just a plain old chain, like a regular necklace, just a hydrocarbon or some other kind of polymer. Mm -hmm. And they add little PFAS as what they call side chains. Okay. So imagine like a chain necklace with pearls dangling down Mm. from it. So there are pearls on the necklace, but they're not making up the bulk of the necklace. Got it. Okay. And so you could imagine if you had pearls hanging down on little side chains, literally, you have a chain necklace, a little chains hanging down with pearls on them. It would be relatively easy for one of those pearls to get snagged and yanked off, Mm -hmm, right? mm -hmm. Well, similarly, these PFAS are on the sides of these carbon chains. So imagine like, oh, every once in a while we have those and they're out at a later part of the process. They're not actually polymerized. They're not part of the polymer itself is a good way to think about that. And so they're more likely to be able to sort of uh, when they're exposed to heat, like when the heat is added to them or whatever, those bonds could more easily be broken and contaminate our food that we're trying to ingest. Got it. And those coatings are usually applied, those kinds are applied usually at lower temperatures. So all of the contaminants that were there to begin with that would be maybe like broken off with heat and been able to be eliminated in something like a pan, there's going to be more of those small molecules that are going to be more easily transferred over into our food. Got it. Dang. So that's your chemistry lesson for today. Okay. It's just a different type of PFAS. Mm Mm-hmm. And so the FDA was like, "Uh uh-oh, not good. We're getting rid of these. So they made um, anyone who was still using them promise to eliminate them by a certain time. And Mm -hmm. as of the very last day of February, I think, it's officially happened. Wow. There's no more PFAS. Okay, so the the date that had to be done was the last day of February or something like that? I think so, yeah. Wow, cool. Okay. So the FDA has now received word that... There is no PFAS being used in greaseproof paper anymore Mm. in any food receptacle like that. Got it. Okay. That's exciting, right? Yes. And they're all, what's the very first thing that you think I can tell you? I mean, what are they using instead? What are they using instead? So there are some really great alternatives like um, silicones, waxes, um, things like that. But... The exact same problem that we talked about with BPA, where they just used bisphenol A, they switched to BPA, they switched to bisphenol S, BPS, Mm -hmm. and now they're like, oh, wait, this might do the same thing. Mm -hmm. We don't know what they're using instead. Right. And so for most of the alternatives, there are really good ones, and those companies are being transparent about that, but most of the companies are citing like, it's so competitive to make non PFAS grease proof paper that we can't just be sharing what we're doing. Mm. And so my initial thought is, yay, I'm so glad that these have been eliminated mm-hmm. and I'm very concerned about what they're using now. Yeah. And so I think that brings us to the next thing that is 
really important, I think, in keeping us safe from the chemicals that we come into contact with every day, some of which are perfectly fine and some of which are perfectly questionable, is transparent. Mm-hmm. And we've talked about this before, about how we think that household chemicals should have to have an ingredients list similar to what we have on our food. But unless there's support for that in the public, it's not going to get done. Mm-hmm. So I think another thing that we really need to push for is transparency in the coatings that go on things that touch our food. Yep. And transparency in general in the types of chemicals that people are using for things that are going to go into our homes. Like, we don't know what, for example, um, paper plates that have that, like, sort of glossy, waxy coating. Mm -hmm. We don't know what that is. And we sell it at the store and we could take it in our home. And that's concerning to me. Mm -hmm. I think there needs to be more transparency and more independent tests to determine the safety of things. Yeah. So... It's weird because there are some things, obviously, where for, for a long time we've had to add list ingredients of it. But like, I think if it's a household cleaning spray or something like that, any of those things, if it's like in a liquid, it's a bottle, they have to list what's in there, right? They have to list the active ingredients, but that can be a really small portion. Ah, uh, okay. There you go. And that makes it where they do, sometimes there'll be like green washing where it's like, mm-hmm. oh, this is a cleaner alternative of something, but it really isn't. It's yep. just like they change one little thing. Yep. Right. So there's a lot of things that we don't have good transparency and things that I've been like, what is this? And Mm. gone to look and couldn't find it. Yeah. Man. Yeah. That's very weird when you think about it. Yeah. It's almost like they have something to hide. I'm not saying they do. I'm just saying it would (laughs) be the kind of thing you would do if you didn't want people (laughs) to know what was in your thing. Yeah. And if you didn't mind, be. then it seems kind of like you would be fine telling people what's in it because it's all good and there's nothing harmful yeah. in there. So just saying. And it's hard because my instinct is it feels kind of bleak because mm-hmm. it's like, who's making this? What are they doing? They're hiding behind these industry secrets. It's so competitive, whatever. Mm-hmm. But I don't think we need to be discouraged because the FDA is doing what we want it to. This is the second thing now. They've also come back on um, diphenhydramine. No, not diphenhydramine. That's Benadryl. What's the one that's... Oh, yep. Yep. I know you're not talking about. Not pseudoephedrine, but the other one. That doesn't work. Dang, I can't remember. We can't either. But, so they've, they're doing things that we want them to do. So the thing that we can do is... That's a big win for the FDA, I mm-hmm. think. So the thing that we can do is continue to put people in office who are going to support the FDA and scientific research to really try to make positive changes and to hold industry to a higher standard and keep us safe as a whole people. Because mm-hmm. individually, we can do things where we decide we are not going to use this in our house. But that's to some extent, it's unavoidable if it's getting in our water supply. Right. And again, that's really only an option for those of us who have more resources. So yeah, I wanted to talk about this and say, yay, I am very excited about that. I'm excited for this space it's making for people who are really trying to innovate well mm-hmm. and who are making biodegradable options, who are making um, things that we know are bioinactive. So like silicones are safer who are trying to make more one time or less one time use options, but does leave me with a question. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I just wanted to talk about that. Yep. Another PFAS episode. I don't have good answers. I feel like we're back into the gray, but mm-hmm. that's something I wanted to touch on. Well, maybe it's, that's a good precedent where it's like, okay, if scientists are testing these things once they're out in the world, and they are able to say, listen, here's what we found. Here's what this looks like. Here's the things that we've consistently found that these seem like they break off and could be getting in the food and blah, blah, blah. And if it's like we have in the past banned certain ones and we've gotten a good habit of that, then maybe it's the kind of thing where we're like, okay, right, we believe you, we'll do it again, you know, and maybe we get good at that because if we do it a few times, maybe corporations get the picture where it's like, okay, I'm not going to switch to another PFAS I'm going to go with one of these better yeah. um, options. It's not PFAS and 
and makes me not have to switch again, you know? I totally agree. Because that would, they would have an incentive at that point to just mm-hmm. not keep on switching. And obviously money is their incentive. And so if they don't have to do it, they don't have to switch something, they won't. Um, so anyway. Yeah. But here's a, a very small local to us uh, win on the on team, no PFAS. So after our series, mm-hmm. or, you know, the <laughs> after the series, we th- sort of paused it knowing that it was the story was not over, but we paused it for a bit. I was uh, explaining, kind of gave you some cliff notes of it a little bit to our friend Grant. And he had been given by somebody else, so in some ways not his fault, a Teflon pan that he was using. And classic thing, he was like, I'll use it mostly for eggs kind of stuff, you know. Um, And I was like, well, I mean, yeah, obviously it's given to you, so whatever. But I was like, here's just the stuff we talked about and and here's things that should, you know, you can't eliminate from everything, but it'd be nice to eliminate it from the you can choose to not have. Yeah. And so the the pan got some scratches on it. So just literally last week, I think it was, he um was like, "Okay, time to replace this." Mm-hmm. Went he went, he did the thing that we talked about. He went to the store to see what he could get that was not Teflon. And guess what? He did find a just on, on a typical store, I think it was Target or Walmart somewhere like that, got a fairly normal Accessible household brand carbon steel pan. Yay! That is there ready to be able to be grabbed by almost anybody. Because we talked about that, that they said you're going to be not, we're trying to do as little non stick alternatives mm-hmm. as possible. Mm-hmm. Right? Yep. yep. So it's, mm-hmm. cor- it feels almost like, um, those like the whack a mole game mm-hmm. or something, but mm-hmm. it's like, we're like trying to make it to where like eventually there's no more little holes you can slip yep. through anymore. Like mm-hmm. <laughs> we can't just change your ethics here to mm-hmm. <laughs> not make them, but we can just keep legislating to make it so annoying and slippery that mm-hmm. you might as well just do the right thing. <laughs> yep. And if we're like, obviously we're just a little podcast, but if we're talking about it here and people who listen and who are interested in this topic are changing what they use, at home, the things we can't control and they're talking about it to their friends and stuff like that. And there are easy to get alternatives that does probably make a percentage difference on some Teflon company's books somewhere, right? Somewhere. Like, huh, we haven't been selling much of this at this, that store, those stores anymore. Looks like this other thing is growing though. Yeah. And then boom, before you know it, it's like they are making changes because money. Not because, because of money, yeah. You know, not necessarily. I guess that's something we also don't talk about is when you can vote with your money, voting with your money. We mm-hmm. talk about that, like, <laughs> that really on our individual small scale, one person's not going to make a huge change. But if lots of people money money is going to the same thing, mm-hmm. then thing that we can mm-hmm. really make change on is, oh, we're affecting the bottom line. Mm-hmm. And who knows if we really thought about it between you and I, and the people we've interacted with, how many Teflon pans have we prevented from being bought in our circles? Mm-hmm. Who knows? But it's like, it might be significant enough, yeah. you know? And also because Teflon pans, you kind of have to keep buying them. Mm-hmm. Like how many would people have bought mm-hmm. in their lifetimes? Yep. It's true. Mm-hmm. So vote with your dollars. And I definitely think we need to keep things in place that will keep corporations being held to a higher standard, keep laws in place for transparency and for safety. Mm -hmm. Sure. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it is like, this is a small win from the FDA, but then we have to be careful about what's coming next. I think. Yeah. And so not only can we say no PFAS, but also tell us what's in your stuff. That's Mm -hmm. my next thing that I want to know. I'm like, okay, but what is it? Mm -hmm. (laughs) So that's my thought. So yeah. Dang. We can, if you want, talk a little bit about the molecule, but I feel like that was kind of more of a side, and instead I just kind of wanted to give the update and the report. Yeah, okay. So. Well, thanks for sharing your win with Grant. Yes, I was thinking as we were talking about it, I was like, I'll save this for the end. I almost said at the beginning. I was like, we might need a little a little pick win, <laughs> you know. <laughs> well, that is a little pick me up. And also, do you want to share other happy things? I would love to. Are you guys ready? 
So I think we talked about, did we talk about morning routine stuff last time or was that in a chem unity? Okay. There's a little plug for our chem unity exclusive secret podcast for people who are part of our Patreon chem unity. Like John T is now. Mm Mm-hmm. Where we talk about non-chemistry things and hang out as friends and talk about stuff in our lives. Um, so I'll talk a little bit about the changes to my morning routine. One of those things, just, you know, giving you a, as a little bit of it, um, is that I started getting back into running. And I've been having problems and, you know, could be that I'm getting older. It could be that I took a very long break from running and I'm trying to get back into it. My body's confused. Why not both? They were both. But I'm having specifically midfoot problems. Oh, um, no. Like your I, arch? Yes, or lack thereof because I don't have one. Um, or don't don't really have one uh, because my feet are flat as skis and they always have been. <laughs> but I, so I was looking into that and I was like, this is weird. I didn't, it wasn't just like the first week kind of thing. You know, it was like, I could see how this is persistent problem. And um, I was looking into some stuff. And I am testing, okay? We're, okay? we're all scientists in a way. A little scientist inside all of us. We all have one inside of us, exactly. And we should approach things scientifically mm-hmm. wherever possible, right? Mm-hmm. I am testing um, using zero drop, very oh, thin okay. soled shoes. Um, I thought it was called barefoot shoes, which is confusing because they are still shoes. And so <laughs> your feet are not bare, but... Anyway, for people who, it can, for all sorts of people, it can be helpful. But what I found that was recommended for me to at least try it was that for people who have flat feet, um, you, your feet are still going to be flat, but sometimes what can, can happen is just the muscles in your feet are um, need to be strengthened. And if I have been getting certain shoes that feel better for my flat feet, it is possible that I'm kind of keeping my feet weaker in the in the areas where you're like supporting it so the muscle's not working. Yeah, something like that. And I'm this is where I'm like, all right, I'm not gonna just try to become an expert in it. I'm like, I'm gonna try something. Feels like a crutch instead of strengthening the muscle, maybe. Yep. Mm-hmm. Like you're you're relying on the crutch instead of healing the broken foot or whatever. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Yes. Very good example. Um and one of the things people say is even if it's, you know, like still going <clears> to <throat> be a process, but like one of the things that people who have switched to very thin soled shoes for running have found is that it just forces them to change their foot strike while they're running. Yeah. My brother was running like half marathons barefoot for mm-hmm. a while. Mm-hmm. So I'm not going to go full that obviously, but um, I just don't, I don't need, to, I don't feel like I need to, but I do need something to change. So like I'm doing these shoes. It's supposed to help you naturally adjust your foot strike and also strengthen your feet at the same time. But it's kind of hard when you have been running before and you're used to certain things to just like change how you run, you know, like if it's the way I'm running, the way my foot's striking the ground, that's sort of causing the problems. Like, I don't know how to like change it, you know? Yeah. So anyway, trying that, it's been interesting. I'm wearing those shoes right now. Um, and if any of you who are listeners have experience with this stuff and this topic or are just interested, message us, I'll tell you more, but I will not Thanks. go too deep into the nerdiness or talk about brands and advertise them because uh, uh, they're not sponsors of the show. <laughs> I support that. Yeah. No, not a sponsor. Yeah. Okay. Well, I have something similar. Okay. Um, well, not really, I guess similar, but um, similar to what we were talking about in the episode of like voting with your money and mm-hmm. where you can. And listen, I know this is not possible for everyone, mm-hmm. but I learned about eggs and I knew this before, but I like, there's a picture. Did I already talk about this? I don't think so. There's a picture that was crazy to me and it's about, it's about um, chickens. Okay? Oh and, yeah. And um, like farm raised versus cage free versus mm-hmm. free range. Okay. So it was like, this this picture that's like a circle mm-hmm. and it's like, you know, cut into sixth. Mm-hmm. Okay. So like imagine a pie cut into sixth and inside the pie, there is a very small circle and there's like 
tiny, tiny compared to the slice of pie that you have. Mm -hmm. And they're like, this is the circle of what caged regular eggs that aren't labeled as anything are. And it was like very small. And then barely bigger than that, like not even double, is cage-free eggs. And then a little bit bigger than that, like maybe double from the cage-free eggs, is free-range eggs. Mm -hmm. And the first two levels of eggs, the chickens never see outside. Mm. ever mm -hmm. and then in free range eggs the chickens see a little bit outside mm -hmm. and then there's pasture raised which gets the whole piece of pie and the pie regularly rotates around the circle so that these pasture raised eggs or pasture raised chickens are always getting they're always getting to see a light and they're getting to range in different pastures and they get this whole piece of pie to themselves mm. to go outside and my friend who used to raise chickens told me about that. And I was like, that's so interesting. Yeah. And it, and she showed me this picture and it made me like have such an impact on me because I thought like how much happier and better my body is when I'm not under stress. Same thing is probably true for these chickens. Mm -hmm. And so these eggs are probably just like higher quality, better for my body. So I tried it and um, they're like a totally different color. Huh. It's kind of crazy. They're like this beautiful amber yolk instead of like a pale one. It's mm -hmm. wild. Huh. And they are tastier. And um, so anyway, I've been into pasture raised eggs lately. Nice. And they make my avocado toast that I have for breakfast really good. Nice. So that's one thing. But if you're like, these are like a totally different color, like the green eggs and I have them <laughs> with my hand. Well, sometimes I have <laughs> these like, these like blue shells, which oh, yeah. reminds me of Robin's, but. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, so there's that. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing where I've been trying to vote with my dollar. Mm -hmm. And then another thing where I've been trying to vote with my dollar is we've been, we're getting ready to go on a big, long camping trip this summer. Mm -hmm. And we are trying to get our camping set up you know, mm -hmm. already. And we have an old camping stove and we needed some kind of like griddle to go on top of it. Uh -huh. And there was one. It was really cheap. And I was like, oh, this looks good. And it was nonstick. And I was like, no. Mm -hmm. So we got a, a cast iron one instead. Nice. But the fun thing about that is um, I got it all with credit card points. And money. Nice. So we, we like every other year we do a big trip and that we're like willing to spend more money on. And mm -hmm. then the alternate years we like try to do something small. Well, this year our big trip is a camping trip, but we're doing it all in our car. So we don't have to pay for hotels. Yeah. They're using our credit card points to get a bunch of gift cards. So we've gotten a bunch of stuff. Nice. In gift cards. And what's great about that is then we have it. And so mm -hmm. then we can still just go camping. Yep. It's stuff that we've tried to do, like uh, buy it once and let it last for a really long time. Yeah. Things like our cast iron griddle, we'll be able to use that for camping, mm -hmm. you know, forever. Mm -hmm. And so that's been fun. Very and smart. Gets us ready to take lots of little weekend trips whenever we want. Nice. So. Let us know if you guys want to go camping. <laughs> Listeners and Jam and Co. That would be so fun. Yes. Some, someday it will seem not impossible to do that but with for us. kids, I feel like that's hard. Yes. But at some point, it'll be super fun and it'll be cool to take kids doing stuff like that, you know? We have talked about that. Like, oh, do we, what would we do if we have kids? And I was like, I don't know, but I really don't want to get pregnant on accident like before this big long two week <laughs> yeah. trip that we've been planning for a year yeah <laughs> so um whatever we do if they come on trips at some point or not being pregnant on that trip seems like it would be miserable because we sleep in our car and that's mm -hmm. pretty small mm -hmm. so um because of bears i don't want to sleep in a car mm. i've learned a lot about bears so sleeping in a car with a big old pregnant belly seems hard mm. and climbing up into it. can you imagine yeah one of our friends is very pregnant right now so imagining her climbing to the back of the car is pretty funny yeah <laughs> so yeah that's what those are my fun things nice been going camping and eating good eggs nice mm, good eggs good eggs you're a good egg well very cool and so are our listeners yeah, nice transition <laughs> <laughs> well thanks for teaching us uh, yeah about PFAS and adding another chapter to it, even though, as we said before, it is sort of sad to learn about, but it's good to learn about. So thank yeah, you. Definitely. Thank you for doing the research. And thanks for listening and to Brian for yes. sending it. Mm -hmm. 
And yeah, thank you, Brian. And if, and for you, if you have a thought or question or idea, a follow-up question, a correction, something like that, you want to send to us, please do. You can do that on our website at chemforyourlife.com. That's chem, F-O-R, yourlife.com to share your thoughts and ideas. That help us keep our show going and contribute to cover the cost of making it like John T. did. You can join our super cool chem community of patrons on patreon.com slash chem for your life. It's patreon.com slash chem for your life to join our super cool chem community of patrons and get some perks, get to hang out with us, get to know us a little bit better. Uh, if you're not able to do that, you can still help us by subscribing in your favorite podcast app, rating, writing, review on Apple Podcasts, and also subscribing on our YouTube channel. Those things help us to share chemistry with even more people. This episode of Chemistry Free Life was created by Melissa Colini and Jam Robinson. Jam Robinson is our producer, and this episode was made possible by our community over on Patreon. And it really means so much to us that you all make chemistry accessible to even more people. And I want to shout out, especially John T. Welcome to the list, John. As well as Avishai B, Bree M, Brian K, Carol R, Chris and Claire S, Chelsea B, Derek L, Elizabeth P, Emerson W, Hunter R, Jacob T, Christina G, Katrina H, Latila S, Lynn S, Melissa P, Nicole C, Rachel R, Sarah M, Stephen B, Shadow, Suzanne P, Timothy P, Venus R, Radioactive Dreams, and Colin Kinnett. So thank you all again for everything you do to make chemistry for your life happen. And I also want to shout out Bree, who often makes illustrations to go along with episodes of Chemistry for Life. You can see those on our YouTube channel. And you can support Bree on Twitter and on her website, which you can find in our show notes. And if you'd like to learn more about today's episode, you can check the references for this episode in our show notes or in the description of the video on YouTube. Yay, chemistry. Yay, chemistry. Boopy fast. <laughs>